So like I said, um, we will be uh, taking a look at what is EAC, uh, BAC, deviance and pseudo R squared and also confusion matrix. We'll try to cover, we'll try to cover as many metrics as possible in today's session in case I cannot cover everything uh, today, uh, we will uh, continue tomorrow, okay? This is very important, this uh, session, because uh, once you understand these uh, topics, you'll be, uh, all, you know, you'll be all set to uh, attend other sessions. Even if you miss out any future session, uh, you just watch my video. That is more than sufficient. And uh, by, with these metrics, uh, with the help of my video, you'll be able to understand, you know, how I validated uh, the other models. Other than the linear regression, logistic regression, uh, the rest of the machine learning models, you don't have to validate any assumptions. Only for linear regression, logistic regression, you have to validate the assumption. Okay, now let's start with what is uh, EAC. EAC stands for <coughs> Archaic Information Criteria. It is analogous to the adjusted or R squared in linear regression. Like uh, R squared in linear regression, uh, EAC is the measure of fit in lo in logistic regression. Uh, here, it finalizes the model for the number of model coefficients. If you keep add more variables, the mo the EAC what it does is it will penalize those variables have lesser predictive power. That is what I meant here. So penalize in the sense right, it penalize those variables have less predictive power. It penalize that one. But don't literally, uh, you know, uh, compare uh, the R squared of uh, the R squared matrix of linear regression with this one. But in the case of adjusted R squared, I'm talking about adjusted R squared. Adjusted R squared in linear regression, that is the one penalizes the features uh, that were having uh, less predictive power. That's what uh, you know we discussed as part of uh, the linear regression algorithm. But here also the AAC, when you add, keep add the variables it will penalize uh, those uh, features that were having less predictive power. So, so that is the reason why we prefer using a, the AAC, okay? The lesser the uh, value of the AAC, the better the model, okay? So now, okay, so the, the thing is, uh, this is the formula for uh, the computing the AAC value, minus two into log likelihood into two plus two into P plus one. Here LL stands for the likelihood of the model on the training data set and P is the number of parameters in the model. So you must be wondering what is LL? Okay, log likelihood, what do you mean by log likelihood? It is nothing but the sum of the likelihood residuals you know what is residual it's an error right at each observation level the natural log of the error is computed for for each record okay and it is multiplied by minus one and those values are summed the summed values then used as the basis for the deviance okay this is what log likelihood at this moment you don't have to worry too much about uh, the log likelihood also it is very good it's a very simple right log likelihood is the sum of the likelihood residuals that's all so here what you see is the model logistic regression model summary in r okay so this is the one i printed it in r okay i printed the summary of the logistic regression i use the same model uh, and uh, I did the future selection. After I did the future selection, you can see only uh, six, seven features are there here. Instead of, uh, in the first model, I included all the features. After including all the features, uh, I could see that the AAC is 772. As I told you a while back, lesser the AAC, the better the model. So what I did, I just did the future selection. And you know, as per the feature selection, these are the features that were recommended to include in this model. Hence, I included only these many features, the rest of them I discarded it. So now my AAC got dropped. The value for the AAC got dropped 759. This the value for this model, the AAC value for this model is very less compared to this one. So hence the lesser the AAC is better the model. So in this case, instead of using this model, better we can use this model. Okay, so the AAC, uh, similar to AAC, we have something called BAC. Before we discuss about uh, BAC, 
let us look at uh, the logistic regression model uh, summary which i printed it in python in you know like or in python also i fitted the model and i printed the summary both this summary of the python and or more or less right both of them are almost similar except uh, you know few additional uh, informations are available in python and uh, there are certain information which are available in r that is not available in python and vice versa now uh, let us try to uh, you know understand okay like r you cannot get aic as part of the model summary let's a look here in in r the aic also printed as part of the summary right model summary model output summary we can see the aic will be printed automatically we did not do anything explicitly to print the aic but in the case of um, python the aic is not available as part of my model summary in python right so what i do is explicitly i typed aic the model name dot aic and model name dot bic okay so okay before we uh, jump into the next thing right uh, let's try to understand what are these things these are pretty straight forward so the de dependent variable used in this model is churn we want to predict the churn which customers are more likely to churn and what is this model is this a linear ols or logit it is a logit and the method is not ols because it is a logistic regression means it use it it used mle to estimate the value for the beta coefficients the rest of them are uh, you know it's very insig it's a, you know very trivial information it is not required and if you look at here log likelihood so what is log likelihood so the value for the log likelihood is minus negative 398.22 it is the natural log of the mle function so what is mle mle is the method used in logistic regression to estimate the model coefficients like beta naught and beta one right to estimate the value for those uh, parameters ml is used so ml is the optimization process of finding the set of parameters which result in best fit okay that is what uh, the log likelihood is and uh, next one is llnl you could see a negative value for this one also the value of the log likelihood of the model right when no independent variable is included in the model that means only an intercept is included okay i did not without including all these independent variable by just including the intercept alone what is the log likelihood so that is what null log like log likelihood that means null model though it is a null model it includes only the intercept okay uh, right so that is why it is called null lll and llr p value llr p value is log likelihood residual p value at this moment if you understand these two that is more than sufficient now let us jump into understanding what is aic aic is already computed by the model we don't have to compute it explicitly this is already available the, the aic is 832 okay and we have something else called bic b is 924 we know the formula for aic this is the formula for aic and here Uh, the I just copy pasted the same formula here, and minus two into log likelihood plus two into p plus one. This is the formula, and log likelihood already the model has given. Simply if you plug in this here, and two into what is p? P is nothing but number of predictors. The how many number of predictors are there? The independent variables. If you count it, seventeen are there, right? Seventeen plus one. What is plus one? That is for the intercept, unnamed. Okay, that is the value for the intercept. So two into eighteen plus this one, it it gives you eight thirty two. It gives me eight thirty two point four four. The manually computed AAC value and the model computed AAC value, both of them are matching. The next one is we have something else called BAC. BAC stands for Bayesian Information Criteria. Look here, Bayesian Information Criteria. Both the AAC and BAC falls under. Uh, information criterion okay this is one kind of indices or matrix the bic is the bayesian information criterion the you know the the formula for the bic is this one this is slightly different from the aic's formula 
here uh, the log likelihood we know very well if you plug in this one right you, and if you plug in all this but in this case uh, you need to specify the number of samples how many number of observations were there in your training data set if you specify that that is more than sufficient so like uh, a is c here also right the one is for the intercept and p is the number of predictors n is the sample size using both a is c and b is c also we can do model selection not only we use a is c we also use uh, b is c to do the model selection now the question is uh, why there are two metrics like a is c and b is c so what is the difference between these two right it uh, the ac adjusts the deviance by the number of predictors but whereas here in this case it adjusts the deviance by its degrees of freedom and the sample size what do you mean by degrees of freedom sample size minus 1 and the sample size okay that is the difference between uh, these two okay and uh, next we will look at something else called deviance so this is the one uh, my the same thing uh, which i copy pasted from the previous slide this is the logistic regression models uh, summary output at the bottom of this uh, summary output you can see something called null deviance and residual deviance so this is the one i printed it in or okay the summary for this model i printed it in or i just took the screenshot and i copy pasted it here here uh, the null deviance refers to the null model like in python uh, you remember i was talking about uh, ll null right so it is somewhat similar to this one okay null deviance null deviance is it refers to the null model that is an intercept only model and the next one is residual deviance what is residual deviance after including all the in in independent variables in the model what is the deviance the deviance is nothing but the residual or error okay usually the residual deviances will be less than your null deviance okay less than your null deviance it is uh, right the both the null deviance residual deviance is um, somewhat similar to the linear regression model just think of uh, the residual deviance as a residual sum of square and the null deviance as the total sum of squares the difference between these two if the difference between these two are larger right it is better the model okay especially uh, if the this value is right or uh, you know much lesser than the null model null deviance it is good and the next one is we have something else called pseudo or squared pseudo r squared you would have noticed here right so but in r it will not display pseudo r squared is not there but uh, here in python uh, the model summary it has the pseudo r squared value here so in right so this is similar to the um, linear regression model there are different um, pseudo r squared measures are available in this case i included only the mcfadden pseudo r squared the formula for this one is 1 minus log of lc divided by log of l null the lc uh, is nothing but the maximized likelihood value from the current fitted model and the l null is correspond right it is for the null model okay this is the null model here in this case right um in the case of um, pseudo r square a small uh, ratio of log likelihood represents that the model is a far better fit than the intercept model okay the log likelihood would right a small ratio of the small ratio of log likelihood right that is the one says uh, the uh, full model is a far better fit than the intercept model okay but in, but, but uh, in the case of um, linear regression r squared and this one right the interpretation is completely different right the pseudo r squared measures in log it is different from the linear regression just keep that in mind it is not uh, same as the linear regression models r squared 
Next, uh, you might have noticed this one, pressure scoring iteration in our um, summary output. See here, uh, the pressure iterator scoring is, uh, scoring iteration is 6. The lesser the value, it is better. Okay. Uh, that means my model takes lesser iteration to converge. What do you mean by converge? Converge is nothing but uh, to get uh, the, till the model was able to get the lesser error, right? It will keep iterated. That is what converging here. Any of you will understand what is converging little later also. Okay, when I talk that uh, as part of other machine learning algorithm, you will be able to understand very clearly what is. Any of uh, I'll be covering uh, the other algorithm also later. Next one is we will see what is confusion matrix. This is another matrix, right? This is a uh, confusion matrix is a table or representation of uh, actual and predicted value. See the table uh, represent of actual and predicted value. The rows are having the actual values while the columns are having the predicted value in it. So this is the one is used to measure the predictive accuracy of the classification models. It will be used not only for logistic regression, also it is used for many classification, all the other classification algorithm. That's why I told you at the outset of this uh, today's session, right? So the all the classification algorithms it will use confusion matrix. You will be using confusion matrix. Again, there is a caveat, right? So there is something called imbalanced data and uh, non-imbalanced data. In that kind of situation, which one is helpful? That and all we'll discuss it a little later. As part of confusion matrix, there are two types or there. One is binary class classification, uh, binary class classification confusion matrix. It is also called as two class confusion matrix. And the next one is multi-class confusion matrix in the case of um, see you can use uh, confusion matrix only for the classification related algorithms to validate or to evaluate the classification model related uh, performance you will be using confusion matrix confusion matrix should you know you cannot use confusion matrix for evaluating the non-linear Sorry, uh, the um, what do you say? The linear uh, linear regression models or other regression models you cannot use it. It is you can use confusion matrix only for evaluating the classification related algorithms like support vector machine, random forest, gradient booster decision tree, neural network, so on and so forth. Okay. So in the case of uh, binary uh, class confusion matrix the confusion matrix will be a two cross two matrix as the name suggests it will have only two class yes or no or positive or negative some people they call positive as event and uh, the, the negative as non-event okay so in this since you have only two class you will have two cross two matrix so now to understand uh, the confusion matrix, uh, the fields in the confusion matrix, right? Before we understand, let's try to understand. I'll just give you a you know background about this data set. Of, you know background about this one, right? Uh, what what is? Uh, why do we need confusion matrix uh, exactly? Okay. So in this case, now let us start look at this data set. This is a training data set. Here we have the actual value here. So in this data, this is a cancer data set. Uh, here we have four customers, uh, four patients data is there in this data set. This is my actual value. This person uh, right, uh, is having cancer. So here one says true, that means he is having cancer. You can say true or positive. And this person, he doesn't have cancer. Zero, that means it is negative. His report is negative is a non-cancer person and he is having cancer and this person is not having cancer. Now we train the model and we predicted the model on this training data set itself I, and I just copied this predicted model predicted uh, uh, the classes for these four customers alongside this actual value. If you look at this the model correctly predicted this person has a cancer patient because the actual and predicted are same here hence my model correctly predicted 
this person is positive this report is positive is a cancer patient when you look at the last record here the last observation my model correctly predicted this person doesn't have cancer the actual and both the predicted both of them are same so in this case my model correctly predicted this person has a cancer in this case my model correctly predicted this person doesn't have cancer when you look at these two observations this person is actually not having cancer but my model wrongly classified this person as or predicted uh, this person has cancer and here this person is actually having cancer but my model wrongly classified that this person doesn't have cancer model missed up even the machine learning model also it messes up we cannot expect uh, as soon as we train our model it will predict uh, with higher accuracy if the model itself takes care of it if model produces the accurate uh, predicted uh, outcome values then why do they need data scientist now uh, let's see in this case we have only four observations in in real time scenario let's say you have 100000 observations are there to uh, and after you fitting the model or, or you after you apply the model on this 100000 observations certain instances for certain uh, people the model correctly predicted that they have cancer certain people the model uh, did uh, correct, correctly predicted they don't have cancer certain people the model misclassified did some kind of misclassification using confusion matrix we can interpret uh, in a matter of uh, jiffy or in a, in order we can you know instantly we can interpret once you have the confusion matrix you can interpret uh, in a matter of uh, you know a few seconds so you know we are you know, how many number of true positive happen how many number of true negative happen how many number of false positive how many number of false negatives are there so this is the correctly predicted one in the case of correct classification there are two types one is true positive other one is true negative in the case of wrongly wrong classification there are two types one is false positive and false negative see here if you look at vertically this is the one model predicted and this is the one the actual value okay so now if you apply this here this is your true positive the actual is one here and one here and the model also correctly because it's a positive right this is what the intention of predicting the model is developing this model or validating this model to detect the cancer patients and non cancer patients okay the whole intention is detect the cancer patient so in this case the the one is true positive right uh, the this one is true positive and uh, the actual is also positive and uh, the predicted one is also positive hence we call it true positive and look at this one the actual is also zero the predicted is also zero that means uh, e negative right his report is negative that means he doesn't have cancer that is what it says actual is negative and uh, the predicted is also negative here this is what the negative you need to look at here okay the negative this is true positive true negative and what is false positive what is false negative so in this case the patient the model predicted the patient has cancer in, but in reality he doesn't have cancer right it ends it is a false positive wrongly it classified uh, this uh, this observation as a positive wrongly classified this observation as positive that means it is a false positive in this case my right my model wrongly classified this person doesn't have cancer this is called false negative see if you look at this one vertically my model predicted false negative so my model predicted yeah this person has what is that this person has uh, has no cancer but actually is having cancer positive actually is having cancer but my model wrongly predicted he doesn't have cancer but in this case the person is not having cancer but my model predicted he has cancer hope you understood right how to interpret the binary class confusion matrix 
now let us look at uh, the different uh, data here so let's say my target column is spam so in the case of uh, is spam column we have 1 and 0 1 is spam uh, and 0 is non spam let's say uh, you have given bunch of emails by your employer and you are tasked to classify which all emails are spam which all emails are non spam the non spam is also called as ham so here the 50 observations were spam emails that were correctly identified by the algorithm my model correctly identified 50 emails as spam that is why we call the true positive next one is true negative these emails were not a spam email my model correctly identified 80 emails as non spam emails good but in this case right a false positive is a false negative is a but keep in mind the objective of uh, any machine learning model right uh, the false positive and false negative should be very less again depends on the domain sometimes you are false positive uh, you know you, you don't have to worry about the false positive values and uh, the false negative cost will be high sometimes sometimes false positive value the cost will be very high okay so in that case you know either you can reduce this value or you can reduce this value okay so that's how that's the thing that you need to do it but in general uh, the whole idea is to minimize uh, the false positive and false negative values in the case of logistic regression sorry the linear regression the one of the important objective of fitting the model is to minimize the error similarly to minimize in the when it comes to classification related models not only logistic regression you need to minimize the values for false positive and false negative but again it depends on the domain sometimes you will have to minimize the false positive right if the false positive cost is very high you need to minimize here if the false negative call cost is very high you need to minimize here only so if you don't minimize it here it is okay okay but if you but in general if you minimize both it will be good there are four outcomes of binary classification one is true positive other one is um, true negative true positive true negative and false positive and false negative the incorrectly predicted as an event i call uh, the positive as event right interchangeably i say positive sometimes i say event sometimes i say e negative and I say non event don't get confused so here uh, spam our whole objective is find out the spam emails spam emails okay that is the whole objective how many number of spam emails uh, we are able to predict my algorithm was able to predict correctly you remember you you know very well uh, when you uh, go to your gmail when you log into your gmail account in the inbox most of them you would have found uh, the legitimate email ham but you have something called spam folder when you go to the spam folder you can see a lot of spam emails who did this behind the scene the google they implemented these algorithms machine learning algorithms so machine learning algorithms on our behalf it automatically pushes the spam email whatever it, we are getting it to the spam folder right so in in, in this case um, false positive right this is uh, this is nothing but incorrectly predicted as an event so here actually it is not a spam email but my model wrongly predicted it as a spam email the false positive is also called as type 1 error and false negative it is also called as type 2 error in this case actually uh, it is a spam but my model wrongly predicted it is non spam non event okay this is very critical in this case actually it is uh, okay sorry in this case right if you look at here the false positive cost is very high my model uh, wrongly predicted uh, the 40 emails as spam emails whereas actually it is a non spam email 40 emails if that goes to my uh, spam folder mistakenly what will happen let's say all these 40 emails are very it is very business critical 
emails you if you don't see this you are gone right out of 40 probably uh, five to six emails it will be very business critical uh, the turnaround time should be very quick from your side since these uh, emails went into the spam, spam folder you did not check the email you are not able to check the email on time you are gone you lost the business right so in this case the false positive cost is very high even if the spam emails comes to my inbox i'm fine with it. less than 30 emails came to my inbox spam emails came to my inbox let it be there it is not going to have any major impact but this one will have a serious impact that's what uh, depends on the domain you need to decide of these two which one you are supposed to minimize it so in the case of uh, python and or the confusion matrix format is slightly different so in this case um, look here in this case uh, the negative and positive in the the rows right the 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 first row we have the negative values in the second row we will have the positive values but uh, in the case of conventional way of interpreting the confusion matrix the first row we have the positive and second row we have the negative values okay but don't get confused but uh, in general right so now the question is why this format then why should i learn this format even if they uh, even if the format is different still you should be able to interpret correctly you should not get confused okay, that's the reason why i just put all these things here in or this is the package is used to uh, generate the confusion matrix there is a function called confusion matrix that is available as part of caret here you need to specify the predicted value and the actual value and positive equal to 1 this one will generate the confusion matrix in python uh, these are the this is the method you will be using confusion matrix the method that is available as part of the scale on matrix um, and here the confusion matrix method by passing the actual values from your test data and the predicted values of test data as an argument to this confusion matrix we can print the confusion matrix okay so this basically to help you to understand see in in the case of python it will be confusing it will simply display 394 752 7 you might be confusing which one is predicted which one is actual right that is the reason why i just uh, put this one very clearly here hope this one can help you to understand or interpret correctly in python and all. or it is very easier where i think in, yeah in, only in python you'll be posing that issue now let us look at the other format of confusion matrix in this case the actual got uh, you know uh, shifted here and predicted got shifted here look here you're not supposed to get confused even if the confusion matrix format is something like this but in this case the predicted values am but my model uh, the actually it is uh, actually it is what is this it is ham only right negative zero is negative zero is negative the 394 emails were correctly classified as non spam emails when it comes here it is actually a spam email but my model wrongly classified as a non spam email that means it's a legitimate email in this case okay don't get confused uh, with the different format just revisit my video okay the next one is multi class classification so far we discussed about binary class classification related confusion matrix what if i have more than two classes are there in my target variable or dependent variable so when you fit the model if you have more than two classes in your target variable or the dependent variable we call that as a multi class and if you want to classify the observations right we call it a multi class we use multi class classification related algorithms even using a logistic regression we can fit the multi class classification we can solve the multi class classification and here uh, let's say uh, in this case 
you want to classify the given images as cat, fish and hen correctly. You fitted the model, you generated the confusion matrix. Since the target uh, or the dependent variable ha has only three classes in it or three categories in it, your confusion matrix will be in three cross three matrix. But dependent variable as cat, fish, hen. Hence, it is a three cross three matrix. The, the this one right, the diagonally whatever you are seeing, the the green colored, uh, the diagonal right. So this one is nothing but a true positive. Saying cat as cat correctly is six. Here in this case, predicting predicted is fish, and the actual is also fish. Hen. Hen is the predicted one, and the actual one is also hen. Hence. These, these are all called true positive. Now, let us see how to find out the false positive values and true negative and uh, false uh, negative values. Okay, It is a bit uh, challenging compared to the binary class classification related confusion matrix. But it is pretty easier once you understand, right? It is pretty easier. It's very simple only. You don't have to break your head. Okay, now I want to compute the value for the false positive for the cat class. These are the rows are my actual values. The columns are my predicted values. Model predicted values are there, you know, in the columns. Okay, the false positive. So we see false positive with respect to cat cat class. See, this row is for cat. Right? This is the actual values. And this one is the predicted value for cat. Model predicted value for the cat. So in this case, in this first cell, the model six yeah, six images were correctly predicted as predicted as cat. And also it is actually cat. When you come here, when you look at here. The model predicted the image as fish, whereas actually it is cat. Okay, so one uh, image, right? It wrongly predicted as fish instead of cat. And here in this case, my model wrongly predicted hen, whereas it is actually cat. This is my false negative. Okay. This is my false positive. Okay, here look here. Now we need to understand very clearly which one is false positive, which one is false negative. So in this case, if you look here, my model uh, predicted uh, the fish as a cat. Actually, it is a fish, but my model wrongly uh, classified this as a cat. That means a positive, right? My false positive. Falsely, my model assigned a positive for cat here to fish same thing is applicable here my model wrongly predicted cat for hen actually it is hen only predicted cat that's why i use this notation predicted cat whereas it is hen predicted cat whereas it is fish it is false positive because it is positive isn't it here you put positive 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 means cat one means cat, right? In this case, when it comes to cat, it is one, one. But what about these two? So why can't I say these two as a false positive? We cannot say. Here in this case, it is negative. Actually, it is cat, but my model put negative here. That means non-cat. Non-cat. So in this case, it is a fish. My model predicted this one as a fish. But in this case, my model wrongly predicted hen, right? So uh, here it is a negative, right? So actually it is cat, whereas my model wrongly assigned negative these two. Hence, negative means negative, false negative. Falsely assigned negative to these two. Here, falsely it assigned positive to these two values, right? To these, uh, for these two cells. Hence, the false positive values, the summation of the addition of these two values right pcf plus pch that's why i put in detail 
how to identify the false positive here okay the false positives for the particular class can be calculated by taking the sum of all the values in the columns corresponding to that class except the true positive value okay so this is how you need to compute this one next false negative as i uh, explained a while back these two are negative for this one because my model wrongly predicted this one as a fish whereas it is actually cat so negative right so the, for the cat it is negative instead of positive it is negative here also it is negative whereas here it is positive right so my, my model predicted a uh, positive which is nothing but cat but because we are talking about cat plus here positive this is positive right positive this is also positive 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 right correctly this is called true positive but in this case negative instead of actually it is cat but my model predicted is a fish actually my uh, this image is a cat whereas my model wrongly predicted is a hen so predicted as fish whereas it is actually cat predicted as a hen whereas it is actually a cat okay hence it is false negative so pfc plus phc these two are you know you need to use these two values to get the total false negative value next one is true negative you know very well it's very simple this is false positive and this is my false negative the rest of them are true negative see this is uh, the green colored or true positive isn't it this is true positive uh, this is true positive this is true positive but when it comes to cat class this is true positive and this is false positive this is false negative the rest of them are my true negatives so true negative is the addition of all these four values the next one is fish like a cat we need to find out the false positive value for the fish this row is the actual values for the fish okay but here uh, in this case uh, my model uh, predicted so look at this one my model correctly predicted predicted fish as fish four images my model correctly classified fish as fish whereas here my model predicted fish whereas it is cat right so this one and this one these two are false positive now you tell me what is the true negative value for fish can someone tell me what is the true negative value for fish okay this is my false positive what is false negative these two are false negative isn't it these two are false negative these two are false positive these two are false negative what about the uh, false as a true negative this is my true positive for fish these two are my false negative this is my false positive just put a plus sign here the rest of the values other than the plus right the rest of them are my true negative 6228 that's all it's very easy to interpret isn't it in the case of a uh, target variable the dependent variable has four classes in it your confusion matrix will be a four cross four matrix if you have 50 classes are there in your target variable then it will your confusion matrix will be a 50 cross 50 50 cross 50 matrix okay the next one is okay just to summarize so far we discussed about what is aac what is bic and what is pseudo r squared and what is fishing uh, scoring right fisher scoring iteration and also we discussed about binary classification confusion matrix multi class classification confusion matrix and also we discussed uh, how to Uh, you know interpret uh, the true positive false positive true negative false negative in both the cases like binary and multi class classification we interpret it right we how to interpret them so now the question is how these values are helpful just by knowing false positive false negative right how these metrics are helpful in terms of evaluating my model accuracy okay just by knowing uh, what is false positive what is false negative is not sufficient but using uh, the confusion matrix 
we can calculate uh, a variety of metrics like uh, accuracy sensitivity specificity re uh, sorry the precision right next what we'll do is we'll jump into the accuracy part okay so what is accuracy so accuracy is nothing but true positive plus true negative divided by all the values okay and uh, what is uh, the other one is uh, the precision this is nothing but the proportion of correct positive classification from cases that are predicted as positive don't worry about this formulas i will explain you what exactly all these things so we have something called misclassification rate also i included uh, in this uh, session okay the additional thing false positive plus false negative do all that. this is the one will give you the misclassification rate so in total you need to remember only four accuracy and precision recall and uh, the misclassification rate but forget about misclassification rate at least if you remember accuracy precision and uh, recall that is more than sufficient next uh, we will start with what exactly accuracy is all about and when we are supposed to use accuracy okay now let us take a look at this confusion matrix in this case uh, two true positive values there and true false negative two false negative values are there okay fine all these things are there so what is the formula for accuracy accuracy is true positive plus true negative tp plus tn divided by all these values total number of samples out of the total number of samples how many number of samples were predicted correctly that is what accuracy so in the case of balanced data we can use accuracy what do you mean by balanced data we discussed about uh, the spam and non spam email right uh, let's say you have given a bunch of emails let's say you have given uh, 100000 emails out of 100000 emails just only 15 emails were spam listen very carefully it is very simple concept see in your target column you could see that e spam let's say your target column name is e spam in the target column e spam you could see uh, let's you know uh, 100000 minus let's you know 100000 minus uh, 15 emails how much you will get right that value is there in your why you know for 1111 will be there right so 100000 minus 15 right that is what your positive values sorry the zero values that means non spam emails only 15 zeros sorry 15 ones you will find in the target variable those 15 ones are nothing but spam emails so in the case of uh, the target variable if you look at it the spam emails uh, number of spam emails were only 15 the rest of the emails are very huge right non spam is non spam emails are very huge this is imbalanced let's see 50% of the emails are spam and 50% of the emails are non spam then it is balanced not necessarily it has to be you know exactly 50 50 let's say you were uh, non spam emails are 60% and you were spam emails are 40% or 35% then also it is sort of balanced balanced uh, data set okay your your class is your target class is balanced so in that case you can go for accuracy if the data set is not if the data set is imbalanced that means only 15 emails are spam remaining 9990 985 emails are non spam here the number of records for both spam and non spam are completely imbalanced that is called imbalanced data any of we will look at uh, how to deal with the imbalanced data set and what are the techniques or strategies are available uh, in tomorrow session 
simply at this moment you just keep in mind if the data is balanced then you can rely on accuracy so in this case uh, what is the accuracy here true positive plus true negative 3 divided by all these values 3 divided by 6 which is nothing but 50 percent that means my model was able to identify the spam emails 50 percentage of the time okay good this is though it is not so impressive but still it is okay let's take another scenario so in this case look here in this case if you look at here the positive true positive is 0 and false positive is 0 and here the values are little bit bigger right so when you use the formula here if you plug in these values here true positive is 0 plus true negative is 275 and the numerator 275 divided by 300 275 divided by 300 you will get 91.6 percentage that means my model accuracy is very good 91.6 percentage we can raise our collar and say I fitted a model and my model accuracy is 91.6 which is closer to 1 right so the 91.6 somewhat closer to 100 right that means my model is really doing good job but just think about it right it is giving the wrong idea about the result the accuracy gives the wrong idea about this one right so our so what it says is our model is our model can predict the spam emails 91.6 percentage of the time sorry 91.6 percentage of the time my model was able to predict the non-spam emails that is what it says right it is actually sorry my model says this accuracy says 91.6 percentage of the time my model predict the spam emails but it is doing the opposite my model was not at all pick up or predict one email the model was unable to correctly predict even a single email as a spam email look here in this case actually the the 25 emails are positive that means spam emails but my model wrongly classified it as a non-spam email actually this value is supposed to be here my model should have correctly my model should have been correctly predicted 25 emails as a spam email it miss it did uh, some kind of misclassification my model did misclassification messed up but when you rely on the accuracy metric it uh, you know it, it gives us the wrong uh, it gives us the wrong uh, intuition right it, it tells us my model accuracy is very good but actually what is happening here is right uh, what what actually is happening here is it is predicting 91.6 percent of the time the ham emails non-spam emails correctly okay so what happened is in this case right uh, my model bias towards the ham emails right? so here no spam email were detected but still if I say someone my accuracy is 91.6 percent if your model was able to detect even a single email as a spam email then what is the point in saying 91.6 percentage okay. false negative spam goes to the inbox or more acceptable then false positive then false positive right? non-spam is caught by spam filter so what is the impact here this is the one even if this spam email goes to your inbox it is kind of okay but if the non-spam email goes to your spam folder you are gone so in this case it has a serious impact you cannot use accuracy in this kind of situation you are not supposed to use accuracy okay. so in this case what am i supposed to do optimize the precision or specificity there is something else called we have another metric okay this metric is not helpful what other metric is available? We have something called precision 
or uh, specificity okay when the data set is imbalanced accuracy is not helpful just keep that in mind if the data set is imbalanced then don't use accuracy metric what other metric should i use it we have something else called precision and recall okay we have something else called precision and recall so what is precision precision is nothing but the out of the predicted emails how many number of emails were correctly predicted in simple term okay, that is what the definition is look here the proportion of correct positive classifications from cases that are predicted as positive the denominator if you look at it out of the total predicted positive how many how many of them were actually positive that is what precision is tells us right true positive rate the rate of the let's take this simple example for example here the red colored people are infected by covid the black colored people are not infected by covid let's say my model uh, this is my data set you applied the model my model was able to predict only uh, six people as a covid infected people okay my model predicted out of this right only six people of these six people of these predicted value how many of them are correctly the red colored or the covid infected people the black color, you know color is non covid wrongly my model predicted this person also having covid whereas he is actually not a covid uh, person he is healthy person but if here we have more uh, covid people are there but still my model was able to predict only the six people as predicted people so total predicted positive that is what your denominator is it easy to remember okay right are able to grasp it total predicted positive is there in your denominator of these total predicted positive how many of them were correctly predicted five isn't it five so total positive so the true positive divided by total predicted positive is nothing but your precision see precision uh, in english dictionary if you look at it it is kind of accuracy right accuracy so how accurately my model predicted okay let's not get confused with accuracy metric and uh, this english word dictionary okay just for you to understand what is precision uh, in a very simple way i just uh, you know use that one but remember this formula okay total predicted of the total predicted covid people how many of them were actually having covid five right so the formula is tp divided by 2p plus fp so this is the if you look at this one you will be able to understand that's why you have to use multiple things to understand this one okay this is uh, po predicted positive this columns are predicted right so this the whether it is a false positive or true positive but both of them were predicted as positive right so if you add these two in the denominator and the numerator is true or true positive divided by these two values out of the total predicted positive how many of them are true positive that is what this equation says now you understood so if you plug in this value the true positive is 5 divided by true positive is 5 plus 1 the false positive uh yeah false positive let's say this is a false positive okay so 5 divided by 6 0.83 the precision is 0.83 out it's good right out of the uh, six predicted values at least five of them were good instead if you have only two uh, uh, people were correctly predicted remaining four were wrongly predicted so in this case what will two divided by six the model accuracy will drop down like a two divided by six how much 0.3 right 0.3 the model accuracy is not that good so look here now let us apply the same formula here so in this case in this case let us use the precision here true positive divided by true positive plus false positive right zero divided by zero plus zero 
zero divided by zero is zero only. With the help of this matrix, we can tell my model accuracy is just zero percentage. It is not ninety one point six percentage. You can tell proudly, my model predicted accuracy zero percentage. But it is misleading us. In this case, the accuracy matrix is misleading us. In this case, you are supposed to use the precision. So, not only the data is imbalanced, you are supposed to use uh, precision, right? Even in this kind of situation, right? You can rely on the true uh, this one precision. Next one is we have something else called a recall. Okay, so as I told you earlier, uh, if the FP cost is high, then you can use precision. Okay. So next one is recall. What is recall? Recall is also called as sensitivity or true positive rate. Okay, sensitivity. They use different term, but most of the people they use this term sensitivity, sensitivity. Only few people they use recall. But still, you need to remember. You know, if you remember all these terms, it will be better. So, what exactly recall is all about? Of the people that are actually having COVID, how many of them were predicted as COVID? It is pretty straightforward. Look here: two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Right? Of the people that are actually having COVID, of these. Twelve people. My model predicted five people. Forget about this, right? Five people or so. Out of this actual uh, COVID people, how many of them were predicted as COVID? Of this actual, how many of them were correctly predicted as COVID? See, in this case, in fact, my model should have picked up all these. Guys, right? All these red-colored people here. Twelve people of twelve patients are supposed to be correctly predicted by a model, but my model was failed to predict only six people as the predicted people. Out of six, again one one misclassification happened. Now the question is: Out of the total COVID people, how many number of the COVID people were predicted by the model? Out of the actual. So what is the formula for this? Total actual positive. Total actual positive is twelve, isn't it? Twelve, the denominator, and the numerator true positive. Out of the twelve, how many of them were true positive? Right. So that is what it says. So if you look at this, the confusion matrix table, and horizontally, this is the actual value. We are talking about the actual positives, right? So these two are. positive only whether it is a negative or negative right whether negative or positive both of them are positive only actually it is positive so out of the total positive right how many of them were actually positive true positive divided by true positive plus false negative true what is true positive here five here right and uh, true positive is five plus false negative the remaining seven right they were not uh, so those seven people were not correctly my model classified 5 divided by 5 plus 7 0.41 my sensitivity or recall is 0.41 hope you understood the difference between the precision and recall okay with this example and next when am i supposed to use recall Right. If you were uh, false negative values very high, then you are supposed to use recall. That kind of situation we can use. Take this uh, fraudulent transaction example. My target uh, column, the dependent variable, it has positive and negative. So positive is fraudulent transaction happened. True. Negative is negative is nothing but zero. No no fraudulent transaction happened. So in this case, uh, even if my model wrongly classify a fraudulent transaction as a non-fraudulent transaction, it will have a serious impact. 
right so actually it is a fraudulent transaction by right? model wrongly predicted it is a non fraudulent transaction you are gone so in this case the false negative cost is very high so even in this case false positive let's say my model wrongly predicted a certain transaction as a fraudulent transaction actually it is not a fraudulent transaction so in that case what will happen the bank will block their account but finally customer will scream and they will shout out the bank and they will say sorry and they will uh, you know they will allow them to operate their account that is what is going to happen but here there is no money loss but whereas here money loss right if you say a non fraudulent transaction as fraudulent sorry sorry fraudulent transaction as a non fraudulent transaction money loss is there here you are going to impact the you know lose money here so in this case the false negative is very high you can use recall but in the case of fraudulent transaction also if you look at the target column majority of the instances were non fraudulent transaction because nowadays most of the banks they follow the sophisticated uh, security related uh, app apps are running right behind the scene the chances of happening the fraudulent is very less and if you look at the target variable the dependent variable only few transaction you will find the fraudulent transaction as you know let's say one 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 only few ones are the the remaining values are zeros majority of the transaction values are you know the 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 dependent variable values are zero 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 here it is imbalanced right in the case of imbalanced data set this kind of thing right you are not supposed to use accuracy you can use recall again you can use precision also uh, but uh, depends on the cost false positive or false negative cost you need to determine which one you are supposed to use sir okay okay now there is a trade off between precision and recall it is kind of a tug of war right so by increasing the threshold will typically increase the precision and decrease the recall and vice versa so now the question is can i use um, precision or recall if i increase the precision value my recall is decreasing it so how it is happening by increasing the threshold what do you mean by threshold how many of you remember threshold i'll just show you here see all i don't want to go through everything from the beginning we already fitted the model okay i'll just show you this one i did not tell you this one predict function we use predict function to predict the class level remember this is very important this is my model name the logistic regression model and predict function here i just applied my model uh, log the trained model name is log i apply on this unseen data test data set this gives me the predicted class level okay it says this customer is not going to churn this customers are not going to churn. wherever you find one those customers are more likely to churn fine this is assigning either 0 or 1 for the unseen data is there any way if i can assign the probability instead of assigning the class label there is something called predict prob method is available here you you apply this logistic reg trained logistic regression model on this unseen data to predict the probability when you apply this and if you in assign it a variable predict prob this is the one gives you the zero and the the probability for zero and probability for one you are not supposed to get confused with this one okay it, right what is zero and one zero is false and one is true or zero is negative one is positive that means one is true means the customer is going to churn zero means the customer is not going to churn so here what is the probability that customer is not going to churn there is a 0.94 probability the customer is not going to churn there is a 0.05 probability the customer is going to churn that means there is a lesser chances that this customer is going to churn i just printed only first four customers 
top four customers predicted probability the probability values ranges from 0 to 1 that is what i explained to you in the past so it gives you the probability value for both zeros and ones also it is pretty nice isn't it so now all i am interested is one only i, I don't care about zero all i wanted to know is i wanted to predict the churners only true this is true this is false right so hence i am using only one here display only one this one if you look at here these four customers or these four uh, employees are less likely to churn okay the point that you need to remember is the y pred prob variable is holding the predicted probability not the predicted class label okay next what i'm going to do is okay i use confusion matrix uh, i generated confusion matrix my confusion matrix like this now we know how to interpret the confusion matrix everything is fine and next what i'm going to do is adjusting the threshold here you need to listen very carefully it is very simple most of them they still think uh, uh, right the threshold is something uh, difficult uh, to understand it is very simple one you have something called binarize and you have binarize method that is available as part of sklearn dot preprocessing here what we are doing is we are passing the predicted probability to this binary function and what we are saying is anything above 0.4 right anything above 0.4 you make it one right you make it one look here let's take this simple example look here in this case because here uh, seeing the entire data is a bit difficult i just put some sample data for you to understand for example in my data set i have 1.0 2.0 3.0 .3 everything is there i specify the threshold as 1.5 okay i specify the threshold as 1.5 and uh, you know one here the one says the first record okay this is a, this, sorry this is zero index this is the one index right if you in pandas hope you remember in pandas uh, the index uh, for the row or uh, for the rows the index value starts from zero so in this case i mentioned threshold equal to 1.5 that means any value which is more than 1.5 you just put one there look here so here 2 is greater than 1.5 3 is greater than 1.5 and 4 is greater than 1.5 and 5 is greater than 1.5 if i don't specify this it will display the value for both right both the rows i am going to remove this and look here so one is obviously less than 1.5 hence it put zero here so two is obviously greater than 1.5 we are setting the threshold anything greater than 1.5 you put 1 anything less than 1.5 put 0 similarly using binarize look here i i specified the yeah we can specify the threshold here okay we can specify the threshold here look here point for i mentioned you don't have to specify this parameter name explicitly instead simply you can specify 1.5 here is it's nothing but threshold equal to 0.4 that means any probability value assigned more than 0.4 you make it one okay one fine we are done this so th this is what i mentioned it here adjusting the threshold see when you assign adjust the threshold instead of saying 0.4 if you say 0.5 if you specify 0.5 what will happen So look here. If I specify two here instead of uh, let's say if I say three, what will happen? If I increase the threshold value, the number of uh, ones are less. If I increase the threshold, the number of ones are less. Look here. By increasing the threshold, will typically increase the precision, but it will decrease the recall. but it decrease the recall but still you will get confused here what do you mean by increasing the threshold will typically increase the precision that means let's say you have it's take uh, you have only 10 observations are there let me uh, use this one one second 
let's say you have only uh, 10 values that needs to be predicted okay and you are uh, for let's say no customer 1 customer 2 customer 3 customer 4 customer 5 up to 10 customers for this customer my model predicted the probability is 0 0.23 for this the 0 0.0178 and for this person the my model predicted 0 0.72 and for the this you know 0.92 for him for this customer my model predicted 0 0.98 and similarly for this customer my model predicted something like 0 0.0 0 0.006 okay. if I specify the threshold value as 0 0.4 what will happen these values right or these values will be assigned 1 1 1 the rest of them will be filtered rest of them will get filtered so hence the number of positive values are less right the number of uh, the, the yeah the number because the point 0.72 is somewhat closer to 1 right that means uh, there is a higher probability this customer will churn there is a higher probability this customer will churn there is a higher probability will. so when you use 0.4 when you use 0.4 this you know three observations are coming here but when you use 0.5 this you know here yeah, when you use point, uh, 0.8 what will happen only these two observations will come right so in this case the it will increase the precision because uh, the number of observations just two only if you look at these two observations the predicted uh, probability value is very high the precision is nothing but the accuracy right the precision the accuracy is out of the predicted positive values how many of them are actually correctly predicted the correctly predicted is good but whereas since you have increased the threshold value as 0 0.8 you reduce the number of observations right so what will happen the day the recall will fall down the recall will fall down uh, recall what what does the recall says the actual predicted positive is more but uh, the pressure, but when you increase the point 8 right the threshold what will happen is the number of actual positive values will get reduced it's something like you know your goal post let's take this example goal post if you reduce your goal post size what will happen the chances of hitting is very less right hitting the goal is very less here uh, in this case the threshold when you increase the threshold when you increase the threshold that means 0.8 these two values these two values accuracy is very good but what happened the number of observations will get reduced here right? but when you increase the recall what will happen the more number of all the values will be uh, you know uh, all the values will be considered as one but whereas these are false positive or false negatives right Okay, so uh, hope you understood. When you increase the threshold value, number of values are less. Hence, the precision will be good because the higher the probability, the chances are uh, very high that these are closer to one, right? Hence, the precision is uh, the accuracy is good. Whereas, the actual uh, positive values are getting reduced. See here you look at this in 0.72 we lost it my model did not capture it it is something like catching a fish okay take another example like fish right you have red fish and blue fish right? so you have uh, but uh, out of the red fish we are interested in predicting the red fish out of the red, red fish my model predicted only three if you increase the threshold what will happen right uh, exact three fishes right only only three fishes you, you know selected of these predicted the predicted fishes are because these fishes we assign more probability right but what happens is the the other uh, red fishes we are missing it other red fishes we are missing it that is what i am talking about recall the total actual positive is recall since i increase the threshold value for the probability what happened 
certain fishes are filtered because the predicted probability value for these fishes are less let's say if i specify 0.8 what will point so for these fishes 0.8 and above probability assign this fishes you know the probability values are slightly lesser than 0.8 hence what will happen the recall actual positive fishes will get reduced right so hence what will happen uh, this is what is going to happen increasing the threshold will typically increase the precision that means increase the predicted uh, the uh, the accuracy of the predicted thing whereas the it it may miss out the red fishes and vice versa right if you dig, if you increase the recall what will happen you will capture not only the red fishes you will also capture the blue fishes also if you are interested in predicting only the red fishes capturing only the catching only the red fishes but when since you have used recall it will take all the fishes along with, see it will capture sorry not all the fishes it will capture uh, the again it depends on your threshold okay it will if you increase the threshold if you decrease the threshold that means instead of 0.8 right if you specify 0.4 okay in that case the th the cut off threshold is also called a cut off right the cut off will start from here so along with the red fish some blue fish also will be captured here so in that case the precision will go down so there is a trade off here it but it is almost impossible to have both high precision and recall high precision high recall it is almost impossible in the real world scenario so uh, look here let us if you look at this you'll be able to understand if you look at this what you're able to understand see we here we plotted both the precision and recall so in this case uh, let's say you know uh, this is my decision boundary right decision boundary so in the case of the zero threshold right when the threshold is zero both the precision and recall are this same value of around 0.8 right this is my threshold so when the threshold value is zero both the precision look at this is my precision this is my recall both of them are intersecting here both of them have the same value of 0.8 but when the threshold value if i increase it to 200000 this is my uh, precision right my precision increases to somewhat closer to 0.95 when the threshold increases the precision increases whereas the recall falls down Right? so that is what we need to understand see but, but the increasing or decreasing the threshold right um that is similar to shifting the decision boundary right? instead of z right you you can increase the threshold here it is something like shifting the decision boundary so increasing the threshold will typically increase the precision whereas it decreases the recall and vice versa that is what Uh, you should be aware of it and next uh, we, let us look at this one the accuracy is 0.90 whereas the true positive and recall all you know is zero here okay, ideally the precision recall supposed to be, be between 0 and 1 if it is zero that means the accuracy is not good okay right? so here uh, we say 0.90 that means uh we cannot say my model is uh, doing impressive job right still if you look at the if you compute the precision and recall right uh, it will help you to understand or correctly interpret how well the model is performing it look here in this case the accuracy is 0.78 the recall is good and the precision is 0.72 the recall and precision is somewhat closer to one right it is kind of good and uh, let's see your uh, precision and recall let's see your recall is 0.8 and precision is 0.72 for one model after you did some feature selection you refitted the model after you did the feature selection your precision is somewhat 0.8 and recall is 0.6 
now you you caught in between can i use model 1 or model 2 listen very carefully model 1 this is the value for the matrix model 2 what you did the same model you took it you did some kind of fine tuning by eliminating some feature by introducing some additional new feature right so in that case you were Uh, precision is 0.8 and your recall is 0.65 or something like that your accuracy is somewhat 0.8 now you you caught in between these two can i use this model or can i use this model in real time scenario right so in that case to take a call uh, whether to use model a or model b we have something else called f score f score is nothing but the fn score it is taking the harmonic mean of both the both the precision and recall okay it uses harmonic mean in place of arithmetic mean by punishing the extreme values more now the question is okay this is the formula for f score or f1 score it is also called as f1 score or f score this is the formula is used some people they say f measure okay so 2 into recall into precision you know very well what is recall what is precision divided by recall plus precision you are taking the harmonic mean instead of taking the arithmetic mean you are we are taking the harmonic mean to punish the extreme values more so now the question is why can't i use arithmetic mean why should i use harmonic mean but if you use arithmetic mean it is not punishing the extreme values well that is the reason why we are using harmonic mean see the f score is also called as fn score and it is a weighted average score of the true positive and precision that is what f score is all about in python if you want to see the fn score precision and recall we have a method called classification report that is available as part of sql and dot matrix and if you pass uh, the actual value for the test data set and the predicted uh, the class label for the test data set as an argument to your classification report method it will generate a report something like this the 0 and 1 right here the precision is pointed for the negative class and non event okay and recall is 0.99 and fn score is 0.93565 is the support what is support support is nothing but the number of occurrences of the given class in your data set so in this case let's you know you have 565 uh, uh zero uh, classes right i mean uh, the label 565 observations it is flagged as zero and 79 observations were flagged as one in the dependent variable it is kind of a balanced data set right it's kind of balanced it it is not like right 565 and 10 observations really let's you know in the zero Uh, that means right uh, let's say in this case churn we are talking about churn right non churners zero is non churner one is churner true the, they are going to churn the churner is just 10 and non churner is 565 that there is a clear imbalance it is somewhat closer right so hence it is not imbalanced data set see in the case of uh, imbalanced data set we use precision and recall most of the time okay that is the one we are supposed to use it because in highly imbalanced data set uh, a 99% accuracy can be meaningless if i use accuracy matrix and if it tells if it tells 99% the, the accuracy is 99% it is completely meaningless in the case of imbalanced data set fine Oh, fine so this is uh, macro average weighted average also you can see the micro average this is the formula is used to compute the micro average macro average is the average of precision recall and fn score the average of all these thing is called macro average micro average is true positive uh, 1 plus 2 positive plus you know these things right and then the weighted average that the weighted average of precision recall and fn score okay so that is what uh, that is how you need to interpret this here i mentioned Uh, what uh, these things are okay what is iterated average what is macro average and accuracy right accuracy is 0.7 uh, with the both the things but uh, when you look at uh, this one right 0.87 after you do the harmonic mean you are getting 
is kind of okay okay next we will take a look at the roc roc stand uh, stands for receiver operating characteristic curve right this is also used to compare the performance of binary classification model at different classification thresholds that is the beauty of roc this is another metric or another technique that we use it to evaluate the model performance so this one what i will do is i will continue tomorrow i could see many of them dropped out today and uh, they promised to join tomorrow and also you right you uh, watch my video in case of any questions right we will discuss it tomorrow before we start the session we will have a quick recap uh, as part of recap will answer your questions if you have any okay so now i'm going to wrap up the session and before i wrapping up uh, i just want to check with you guys if you have any queries any questions about today's session okay since uh, i did not get any question from you i would strongly recommend you to still watch my today's video but don't think uh, so many things i have to remember take that off from your mind okay so only these many metrics if you learn it you are all set with the entire machine learning related models okay rest of them are very simple only thing is the underlying mathematical principles for each and every classifier classification related algorithm if you know it that is more than sufficient at the maximum if you remember um, 10 or let's say no 15 metrics and remaining 15 algorithms principle right the underlying principle or the mathematical principle that's all you are all set okay but if you uh, compare this with other lang programming language right even uh, java is version lot of things you have to learn it in java and python also version using python you can develop a gaming software web application those people are not uh, familiar with web application you need to learn web application also right uh, it's a version lot of things you have to learn compared to those uh, programming language it's far easier to learn the machine learning algorithms and including the deep learning algorithm deep learning is little bit uh difficult but it's very simple that's where i'm here i'll try to simplify the concept in deep learning also okay fine so since you don't have any questions i'm going to wrap up the session now and we will circle back uh, tomorrow same time okay we'll share the video as usual okay